Well, Sunshine, glad you're back. For those of you that are back, and happy to see everybody that's new to this. Uh, for everybody that's new to it, what we're up to today, we're going to work on the upper transfers and the upper transfer timing and the angle and the shape. So far, we've been doing dyno tests each step along the way. First thing we did was did the lower transfers on this cylinder, seeing what we gained over stock. Then we done the intake. Then we done the exhaust. Today we're doing the upper transfers. They're already done, uh, so sit back and enjoy and see what you got. We're dynoing every step along the way and test cuts. All except for this one, I'll let you guys know ahead of time. Uh, I forgot to I forgot to test cut this one because uh, I put these together. I do the work, put them together, let the glue set up for however long, then I'll come out and dyno it and test cut. And I forgot to do test cut on this one. This particular saw is actually going to two separate playlists. One of them's an 026 build, and one of them's kind of a step-by-step -step build, and it fits both, because I'm, of course, building the 026. Now, after this transfer timing that I'm doing today, and, and the reshape, next things we'll be having is possible machine work. I may need to bring this back down. Guys, I took the exhaust higher than I should have. We're at about 96 and a half. Bring everything back down. That'll leave the blow down the same. But it's going to bring everything back down and open up my intake a little bit. My intake's only sitting at 170, so I, I've got that to play with because I always I wanted to leave that cushion in case I needed to play with stuff. Um, after that, you can see we're we're gathering goodies for muffler mods. Uh, this one here has already had a muffler mod. That's the one I've been running. I've been running the same one time after time. I've got another one here. I've got it, and I've got started collecting pipes of different sizes. Um, that's going to make a fun video. We've also started collecting data for parasitic drag of two rings versus one ring. Uh, it's amazing how much calculated horsepower it takes just to turn two rings over, or this whole rolling assembly. Um, and the only thing I'm going to change on that rolling assembly is from one ring to two rings down the line. So, like I say, on to come after this, possible machine work, possible muffler mods. Well, definitely muffler mods. Single ring and dyno tests on it. Once, I, once I'm done here, the last time I put it together, I'm just gonna put it together with a single ring. If you guys wanna keep your ring separate, an envelope folded in half and tape, and just split that flap down, measure them, mark them top and bottom. Keep your rings separate, because they start seating in, you, you don't wanna switch them around, but we'll get into that later. And ignition timing, we're gonna do, so do some ignition timing. Yeah, we'll measure those and that'll probably be about the last thing we do on this but we've got we've got those steps coming up and those will be one at a time so guys if you if you're interested in it if i earned it like it if i didn't don't uh subscribe if you would it also helps if you watch it all the way through even if you get bored i know i talk a little bit slower once i get going but i'm not trying to put too much that in there um let it play all the way through if you if you got the patience if you don't i get it okay took it apart before I took it apart, I timed it with the sealer in it. Uh, I went timing just a little bit different, so if the numbers ain't exactly the same, I started using a piece of 35 thousandths uh, MIG wire as a stop. I don't just cram it up against it, but that takes the arbitrary on how much first ray of light or whatever I have. I just decided to start using the 35 thousandths MIG wire as standard. I can do that. And then I can actually stick that through the exhaust into the transfers and roll that up. And it makes it easier to do for me, for now. I may find something better. Anyhow, 96 and a half degrees exhaust, 123 degrees uh, on the starter side. Transfers, 123 and a half degrees on the clutch side, so that's half a degree off. Piston looked pretty good. I'll show you that. Uh, 70 and a half on the intake, so 141. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to do the intake, or I'm only going to do the transfers on this one. Uh, I'm going to show them to you right quick. I got one side pretty well done, and the other side's not. If I raised the transfers by about 50 thousandths, which should be about 3 degrees. We was at 27, 26 and a half blow down before. So we should be at with 26 on one side, 26 and a half on the other. So it should put us down 23 range, give or take. There's the transfer after I had just cleaned it up. Uh, how it's been run since I've done transfers first time. You can see, hopefully, I've got a ring set in there. That's where it was. 
and and there's the flatness of the base it wasn't angled up towards the top of that cylinder very much we'll throw it around to the other side you can see hopefully you can see that's angled up more I didn't take much out back in this way I just took that lip off and and changed the angle of it and took about 50 thousandths off I also tapered it a little bit towards the back so this front the intake side will open first uh, we're gonna see what that does for us and I'll be back with you and we'll put it together so we'll go outside and do some test cuts and some dyno runs um, and I do like my dyno runs better and that's that they don't always tell you how you're gonna saw you guys do with that information what you will I'm getting it for myself and I'm sharing it with you guys and I believe it translates <clears throat> you can go out and you can do a test cut and you think you ain't doing no good well this is all the same log I've been using the exact same one for test cutting same chain don't even I don't even move my chain adjuster I have not moved the chain adjuster since I started I get the bar on there lift it up that's the same way now I haven't sharpened it maybe once I touched it up because I cut some firewood but you know this is just one little log and we're starting to get close in it and it seems like every time I cut I get more horsepower and a slower cut Temperature has a big thing to do with it, and so does the size of the log. It's, it's grew that much since we've done it, and the white wood around here cuts easy, but look how much that's grown. Plus, we got into a knot. Now we got an extra knot in there, and plus plus this one. That's the last test cut I did on this and here, on this saw, guys. So I like the test cuts. It makes you feel how the saw's running. But I don't know that a stopwatch on the test cut is the way for, for at least for me to determine if I'm doing any good. Now I do have a sawmill. If I'd saw a six by six can or something like that, that would help. And take into consideration uh, weather and barometric pressure. And you guys can all do that. But anyhow, without further ado, here's the test cuts. Here's the dyno runs. Uh, I forgot to I forgot to test cut this one. Steel 026. Uh, transfers. Now, I promised I'd show you the piston. Excuse me, popcorn hole. Um, man, I make some good kettle corn. Man. Mm. Anyhow, that gummit. Uh, there's the piston and the wash wash pattern on it. There, I think you got probably pretty good light there. Our wash pattern's getting a little better and better and better. Uh, you can see she's coming around here. Well, I'm shaking that around bad, but you can see it's coming around the top side of that fine. And starting to come back here now it hits this running straight out the exhaust I'd like that wash pattern to come out just a little bit farther but I think we're gonna try we're gonna try to do that with the exhaust that's my intention I want to get some draw on that exhaust so we'll see what that gains when we get ready to do the exhaust I need to quit moving around uh, where'd we end up on this we started out with 126 and a half to 127 degrees of uh, blowdown we took it down toward 123 to 123 and a half, uh, right in there. Okay, welcome back everybody. Glad you got this far. Uh, for anybody that hasn't watched up to this point, uh, here's the stock cylinder, 3.2 horse, 9769 RPMs. Then we did the lower transfers. Didn't mess with the upper transfers other than just to smooth them out a little bit. They were ragged. Uh, didn't change transfer timing we gained 0.21 horsepower and lost a little bit of RPMs uh, we hogged out lower transfers on the exhaust side so they aimed towards the intake wall a little bit next thing we done was done the in, uh, intake uh, changed timing just a couple degrees brought it up to uh, I think 143 143 degrees total uh, which is still pretty mild uh, that's just where we started on it with it and gain another almost tenth of a horse but lost some more rpms uh, on uh, where the max torque was at 
Next thing we done was done the exhaust. We gained back some RPMs on that. Uh, we moved the exhaust. I didn't mean to move it that far, misread the wheel, to be honest about it. And we wound up at, uh, if I remember right, about 93 degrees on the exhaust, which was way lower than I wanted to go. Uh, but it is what we it is what we did. Uh, so and we uh, didn't gain we gained a hundredth of a horsepower and picked up eight tenths of a foot pound of torque over the previous. And but we gained uh, we gained about six hundred RPMs in the cut, if you will. Now after the exhaust, we got to today, and you seen what we did with transfer timing, and that moved us up from 3.51 horse to 3.72 horse. So that's 0.21 horsepower. Uh, we dropped a couple. We dropped a couple hundred RPMs again. Uh, dropped about 300 RPMs, but it it moved us way up um, at 300 higher RPMs. We were still over the torque what we were on the last one, if that makes sense. Uh, you'll notice I changed this blow down and aim. We did two things on that. I changed the blow down. It was at about 27 degrees, and now it's at about 20. Uh, I dropped it about three degrees. What we able to do, I didn't touch too much the the outer part of the upper transfers. That means the part away from the cylinder. What I did is I angled that up uh, so when that air comes up that transfer, it wasn't hitting a, a basically a 90 degree turn or an 80 degree turn. It may be hitting like a 70 degree turn now. And what that did, uh, it gave it a smoother transition to get the air into the cylinder. Plus it aimed it up a little bit higher on the intake side and you'd see the wash pattern on the piston. That was getting a little bit better than what I like to see. So we'll compare that to what we was stock. Here we were stock as a red line, 3.2 horsepower. So we've put we've put a half a horse in it now. Here's our last iteration versus uh, the transfer change of blow down and redirecting this flow pattern. We dropped the blow down by three degrees and we changed the direction it flows. Went from 3.51 horsepower at 98.33 to 3.72 at 95.44. So we lost 290-ish, 289, I guess it is, uh, RPMs for max torque, but we're above shucks basically the whole way, uh, down to about 6,000 she changed, and that's getting so low I'm having trouble taking readings, it's dropping so fast. And we were below a little bit up to, let's say, the 11,250 is about where where I caught up. And you're down, uh, you wouldn't, I don't think you'd notice this because by the time you get much pull, you're going to be pulling down to, it pulls down to 10,000, 10, pretty quick. And, and right in there is where you're going to hang in. So I'd say we're, we're using this, so that's going to do it pretty good. Next things we got left to do, stick around, is uh, we gotta, we're going to do muffler mods. We're starting to take heat measurements and rolling resistance on what it takes to turn that saw over uh, with parasitic drag. We're getting ready to do a one ring piston. Uh, we're starting to take heat measurements under load and we got muffler mods to do and timing to do. We got quite a few more things to do on this saw. See where we can get at. We're still shooting for just about four horsepower or a little better. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't have it on here, but I can show you the tracking number of a new cylinder. I done ruined this one here. So what I'm gonna have to do is try to recreate the other cylinder to this cylinder to get me back to this point. Take. I'm going to do all that. We're not going to start all over on that. I'm going to get that back to this point uh, and going about going about our business with the rest of our testing. We've kind of seen what we needed to see up to this point. If the new cylinder is over or below this, I'll let you know what the timing number differences are. Uh, 
Uh, I was, like I told you, I brought the exhaust down further than I wanted to. I was going to cut the squish and cut the base to move the ti uh, exhaust timing back up. And I got my tooling in the I got my tooling boring bar in the side of the daggum uh, uh, cylinder about a quarter inch from the top. Ruined it. Put a scratch in it. Done. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, so uh, bear with me. Uh, I, these results up to now has been valid and the results with the new cylinder will be valid and I'm going to go back to that first brand of cylinder I had which didn't quite perform as good as this one or it didn't yet because I scored it before we ever made it at this point if you want to go back and see how we started this um, I ain't trying to jack you around I wish I didn't have three chunk cylinders sitting out there uh, in the shed waiting on uh, brown sanded to show up with the fourth one but here we are when you're a hack that's what happens appreciate it guys stick around have patience with me and we'll keep having fun keep testing theories